Okay, guys, we are at Lake Bob Sandlin State Park in Texas. And look, I just noticed this is a persimmon tree. Oh, cool. Persimmon. Cool. All right, we're fixing to hop back in the Jeep and we're going to travel on down Park Road 2117 into Bob Sandlin State Park. We stopped in Mount Pleasant to eat lunch. We ended up just getting some Whataburger. And we went to the city park there. It's a small area. Pull off. I'll put a little video or shot of it in here too. It's pretty windy. We sat on a picnic table outside. It's you know, with the windshield, it's pretty chilly. So luckily, I still had our Kimimoto vest in the Jeep. So we pulled them out and put them on, and they kept us warm. Especially with the, the heat. I love these things. We stay really, really warm. Thank you, Kimimoto, for sending us the vest and the jackets. So let's get in the vehicle and travel on. Welcome to Lake Bob Sandlin State Park. This is a state park in Titus County, Texas, managed by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. The park covers 639 acres of land on the northern shore, Lake Bob Sandlin, and about 10 miles southwest of Mount Pleasant. The land in the area was occupied by the Caddo people until the mid-1800s, Fort Sherman, a Republic of Texas stockade was established by 1838 and eventually the land was used for farming and ranching by settlers until it was acquired by Texas Parks and Wildlife Department in 1978. Lake Bob Sandlin is located on Big Cypress Creek. It was impounded in 1977 with the construction of the Fort Sherman Dam. Lake Bob Sandlin is named after Bob Sandlin, a major proponent of the lake, who was a local businessman, civic leader, and president of Titus County Freshwater Supply District Number 1. The park offers over three miles of hiking and biking trails, a fishing pier and boat ramp, and opportunities for picnicking, geocaching, kayaking, and other outdoor activities. It also features campgrounds with hookups and primitive cabins for overnight stays. The park is located at the intersection of the Piney Woods and Blackland Prairie ecoregions and thus has a diverse variety of wildlife including white-tailed deer, raccoons, coyotes, gray foxes, fox squirrel, and bobcats. There are at least 188 bird species that have been sighted in the park, such as the bald eagle and eastern bluebird. And the lake offers many species of fish, including Florida bass, channel catfish. There's a trout pond in the park, and it's stocked with rainbow trout. There are many plants documented in the park, from sassafras, wing nym, sweet gum, Eastern red cedar, American elm, white oak, coral honeysuckle, devil's walking stick, hackleberry, eastern red bud, wild grape, red buckeye, American beautyberry, loblolly pine, red maple, and common persimmon, which we showed at the beginning of the park entrance, and of course, the all dangerous poison ivy. 
We hope you enjoy our drive through this park as we drove through checking out the campsites to make future plans for a stay here. So there is a cemetery within Lake Bob Sandlin State Park. And I found a little interesting read on Classic Rock 96 about the cemetery. And I'm just going to read what they... You know, there's a lengthy tale behind every gravestone. And date markers like 1835 to 1893, you just don't cut it. What in the world happened during that little dash? Our state parks and wildlife folks are telling the stories, and one of those legends from the cemetery in northeast Texas will make you glad you never crossed Frank Benson. Texas Parks and Wildlife says it on its Facebook page that in the 1800s, Frank Benson was a farmer to the north of us at a place called Fort Sherman. According to their story, robbers ambushed him one day and demanded that he take them to some hidden gold in the cemetery. And he went along with it for a while, but eventually he led them back to the farmhouse where he baited the robbers into following him into the loft and then killed one of them with an axe. As you might expect, the other two robbers hightailed it out of there. According to the legend, Benson was always a little freaked out from that point on and decided to sell his property and move away in 1858. If you've seen at State Park Legends on the web, it's because Texas Parks and Wildlife wants to tell more of these old tales. They'd love it if you would share your story too, if you have something interesting, scary, and odd to tell about your ancestors. Texas Parks and Wildlife says you can visit the graves of Benson's relatives in the cemetery, but the gold is gone now, so don't break out that metal detector. The gravestones of the robbers and family members are at the old cemetery at Lake Bob Sandlin State Park in Northeast Texas. Was there really any gold in the cemetery? Who would hide gold near bodies? Why was Benson afraid of people when it sounds like everyone had the right to be afraid of him? We might never know. The answers to those and a thousand other questions are hidden in that dash. Uh, this is a cemetery that's in Bob Sandlin State Park. Small cemetery. I also found an article about ground penetrating radar survey of Fort Sherman Cemetery in Lake Bob Sandlin State Park on January of 2016. It says the ground penetrating radar survey was conducted at the historic Fort Sherman Cemetery at Lake Bob Sandlin State Park in Titus County. Currently, there are are only two period headstones extant at the cemetery, but oral history indicates these represent only a fraction of the original cemetery population. The survey was conducted to determine whether unmarked burials existed within and near the fenced area of the cemetery. The survey employed a geophysical survey system Subsurface Interface Radar 4000 control unit paired with the 400 megahertz antenna. A total of 27 human interments was identified with 12 adults and 15 sub-adult interments. The site is an officially designated state antiquities landmark and this new data will be used in support application for historic Texas cemetery designation. After we checked out the cemetery, went ahead and drove through the different campsites and found a few sites that we would like to book on our next visit. We also went ahead and drove up to the section where all the little cabins were. This is a great area to camp and we really liked the beauty of the park and the wildlife that was within the park. 
as we stopped and watched some deer as they watched us. Hope y'all enjoy the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. We appreciate that and hope y'all get a chance to visit Lake Bob Sandlin State Park too. Big Lake.
this is the first entrance to the campgrounds on the right goes to two loops We've got the restrooms here See campers in the background there. And there's the map. And we are right here. And we're fixing to go around this way. And then around this one. And then we'll come back out and see some of the other stuff. So they've got a couple of primitive camping areas up here. Looks like they may be off a trail. And then you've got camping area way over here. But we're going to continue on with this time change. It's getting dark pretty early and I don't think it's but three something. It's already pretty dark plus the fact that it's cloudy today. Thank you. 
we just stumped, you know, ran across these little deer and thought we would film them. They're so cute. They don't seem to mind the traffic at all.
Okay, so we're going back out where we came in. We've been through all the campsites. Had a little overheating problem with the GoPro, so I swapped to my phone. So when I did that, some of my video may not be real good, but we got what we could get and we're fixing to head out of the state park. Here we're paused by the um, Bob Sandlin Trout Pond Trail. As you can see, it's really a nice tra trail. We'll have to come back and hike all these trails. They look very nice. Okay, we're leaving Bob Sandlin State Park and we saw this historical marker on the way out. Thought we would stop in here. an old church I get back far enough to get it all in frame here <laughs> 